Yay, chapter 32. This is going to be about animals, which is my personal favorite, so get ready to deal with that. Um, so what we're going to talk about in chapter 32 is just what makes animals their own kingdom and what makes them different from, like, say, a fungus, because there's a lot of stuff that we actually have in common with a fungus. So why are we on our own as a um, kingdom? So one thing that you could see listed there is that we are multicellular heterotrophs and we are mostly mobile, which means we are going to move from place to place most of the time. We reproduce sexually. Some obviously are going to be able to reproduce asexually. And we're going to have a characteristic embryonic development. That last part about the embryonic development is the most important part. Okay. So when we break animals down into different groups, um, there's going to be two major groups we can kind of put them into, parazoa and then eumetazoa. Parazoans are going to be sponges, very, very, very simple organisms, no tissues, no brain, no nothing. Eumetazoans are going to be ones that have a little bit more um, complexity to them. So they're going to have tissues and they're also going to have symmetry of some type. So there's two types of symmetry that are out there. Um, there's what's called radial symmetry and um, bilateral symmetry. And here in this picture, you can see the difference. So radial symmetry is going to usually be something that's round. And what it means is wherever there's like, you could draw a central point, you could draw a line through that central point at any point, and you're gonna have a mirror image on either side. So you could see an anemone is a great example of that, as is a flower pot, right? So looking down, they have that central axis, you can draw a line through any of those. Now, bilateral symmetry is a little different. Bilateral symmetry is what we have, and that's where you have a right and a left side that are going to be mirror images of one another, but that's it. There's really no other way you could divide us up where you're going to have a mirror image on both sides. So that's going to be the difference between um, bilateral and radial symmetry. And so what you can do is you can break those eumetazoans down into two separate groups based on that. Okay. Moving down, here we go. Um, another difference between radiata, which are ones that have radial symmetry, and bilateria, ones that have bilateral symmetry, is that the ones that have radial symmetry, the circular ones, are going to be what's called diploblastic, which means as they're developing embryonically, there's only going to be two tissue layers that are going to form. Bilateral symmetrical organisms are going to have three layers, and so we call that triploblastic. And so just having an ectoderm and endoderm isn't enough. We also have a mesoderm in the middle. Okay, so what we're going to do when we talk about how animals evolved is we're going to talk about five major things that happened evolutionarily to the body plan that made big advancements that allowed a lot more animals to evolve. So the first thing is going to be the evolution of tissues. And so um, what I'm going to do is on the board behind me, and I will make sure that you can actually see what I'm doing, um, I'm going to kind of make a little bit of a, um, let's see if I can see this, uh, make a little bit of a, a little plan so you can kind of see what's going on here. So first of all, we're going to just have, let's see, can you see that? animals in general. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. Let's see. That's a little better. So what's going to happen is the animals are going to be divided into parazoa and eumetazoa. So hopefully you can see that. I'm not sure if you can, but I can actually bring this up when I'm done drawing. Um, so we'll, we'll keep going through that, but let me see if I can pick this up and put that over there and maybe you could get a better view. Okay. So that's going to be the first division is parazoa and eumetazoa. Put this back down here. Okay. Now, um, what's going to happen is those eumetazoans can actually be broken into bilateral or radial symmetry. So going back up to the board here again. We can actually break this into radial symmetry and bilateral symmetry. Okay, so that's another division that we can do. 
Now, um, what's going to happen is those that have radial symmetry are going to have that radial symmetry I was just talking about where they're going to be round and you can draw that central, um, that line through that central axis. And then you've got bilateral symmetry, which is where you have the right and left sides that are mirror images of each other. Now, when you have that bilateral symmetry, that allows you to divide the body into different sections. You've got your top part, which is called the dorsal part. You've got the bottom, which is called ventral. You have your front, which is anterior, and your back, which is posterior. So that's kind of a way that you can divide up organisms that have the different types of symmetry. Well, bilateral symmetry to be exact. Okay, let me get this out of here for a little bit. Oh boy, this mouse just disappears and makes life just annoying. Um, there we go. Okay, so bilateral, bilateral symmetry is thought to be more advanced and the way I'm going to draw this stuff on the board is that whatever is more advanced is going to be going towards the right. And so bilateral symmetry is going to be a little bit better because you're going to have better movement, right? They can move from place to place a lot more easily. And if you remember way back, we said that the three things we're put here on the earth to do is to eat, avoid being eaten, and reproduce. Well, if you can move, you're going to be better at all those three things, right? Think about something that has radial symmetry. That's going to be like a jelly or an anemone, something like that. And, um, you know, they're just going to kind of do this if they can even move, right? Whereas if you think of something that has bilateral symmetry, it's going to be able to move around and get from place to place. Um, okay, now let's talk about those three tissue layers, right? You've got the ectoderm, endoderm, and mesoderm. So the ectoderm is going to obviously be the outermost layer while it's developing as an embryo. The endoderm is going to be the innermost, and then the mesoderm is going to be in between. So if we think about what these things are going to give rise to later in the organism, the ectoderm is on the outermost part. So obviously if you think about our outermost part of our body, that's going to be our skin and our nerves. Then if we talk about the endoderm, which is all the way on the inside, that's going to be our internal organs, right? Our intestines and those types of things. And then the mesoderm is going to give rise to what's in between those two. So you've got your internal organs all the way on the inside, your skin and your nerves on the outside. What's left is your bones and your muscles. So the mesoderm is going to give rise to those. Now, one other thing that you might see in things that have bilateral symmetry is a process called cephalization, and cephalo obviously means head. So that's going to be an evolution of a definite head or cranial area. And it's not on all of them, but that is going to be on some of them. Okay, in the next section, we'll go through a couple more milestones in evolutionary history.